Okay, so this is my first day back from my vacation. And you know what they say, the grind never stops. <laughs> um, we, um, yesterday was a very, very long day of driving and driving a rental car. And I'm going to be honest, the car was pretty shitty. Uh, we, what time did we get in last night? I think we got in around 1030. So I did some stuff like I did my laundry. I typed up some of the handwriting that I did. Um, it was great. I loved it. But now that is the next day. I gotta go ahead and get caught up on some shit like this. The night before we left, I finished uh, Canterlot Wedding. I finished season two, which means that I am an entire week behind because I wanted to do uh, a season per week, which means that because of the vacation, I lost doing a season. Unless I binge all of season three today, which it's only 13 episodes, I kind of hate how doable that is. But I feel like, no, I've got enough shit that I kind of wanted and like need to do today. I will watch season three next week. I might binge it in a day and get an early start on season four. I don't know. But that's the future. We're not... That's future Jijid was problem. <laughs> right now we gotta talk about the present. Which I guess is more the past because I already watched it. Friendship is Magic Season 2. Overall, I think it's a definite improvement over Season 1. I like... It's, I don't even be like, I like Season 1, but it's whatever. Like, No, I really like Season 1. Rewatching, I'm just remembering why the show works. And for me, the reason the show works is because there's a genuinely fun cast of main characters. And I think a lot of the writing can be really fun. Some of it is like the reason, to, like to me, like I said, the reason Feeling Pinky Keen is a great episode is because it's just sheer Looney Tune slapstick. I understand people not liking the message. Like it has, it definitely has a religious feel to it which personally does not bother me i can see why it would bother somebody but i think it's so fucking funny that i i, I don't give a shit and i feel like season two kind of takes that vibe and runs with it there are some episodes that aren't particularly funny or aren't particularly good <laughs> but i feel like like, there's definitely some that I am going to criticize that I don't like as much. But we'll get there when we get there. But before we can get anywhere, I gotta explain all this shit. Which I do in every tier list video. If you watch my channel regularly, first off, thank you. If you watch my channel regularly, I sincerely appreciate that. You kind of already know where this is going. You're probably gonna tune this part out or just start saying it with me. Uh, bottom of the fucking barrel. We know what it is. There, are, to me, three cat or three elements to being bottom of the fucking barrel. Number one, actively disliked. Two, being at the bottom of the list. And three, just being such utter fucking dog shit that I know with whatever we're talking about, it's like there can't, there's not gonna be anything worse than this. Just what makes it really interesting sometimes when there's multiple bottom of the fucking barrels. Because there are things that are just that bad. And both of them, or like all three of them or whatever, will be so uniquely terrible that they are all competing to be the worst. And I kind of want to give it to all of them. I don't think there's a bottom of the fucking barrel of this season. Because there is an episode that I think is the worst episode of the season. You, if you've watched season two, you probably know what it is. It's not a surprise. I don't dislike it nearly as much as the Aloysius episode. Like, it's the worst of the season, but I feel like it'll probably be more of an F tier. Segway. F just be that, yeah, it's fucking bad. It's fucking dog shit. It's a failure. It just doesn't work. And there's nothing to really save it either. It's just bad. Not this level of bad, but it's bad. A D, I like to say D and C are kind of the mid-twins. D is the more, it's just mediocre, it's more disappointing. Whereas C is, I just feel more neutral towards it either because like there's just, it just does nothing for me. Or it's, there's a lot to like and a lot to dislike. 
and they kind of just meet in the middle, and I'm left going, eh, I guess it's a C. A B is I respect it more than I like it. Like, it's something that probably has a lot of problems, but there's so much good here, or there's, like, one element of it that is so strong. It puts it above it just being neutral. A means I think it's neat. I fucking love it. I can gush about it. Like, this is Cold Steel too. <laughs> it's like, I know it has its problems. I don't care. I love it so much. S tier means... <sighs> Excuse me, that's what S tier means. S tier means with whatever we're talking about. So here specifically, Friendship is Magic Season 2 episodes. You have an argument for being my favorite you are like a benchmark for being the best one and the double s is the king this is the best and i know in season one i had two double s's a little bit after i finished recording i thought about it more i put this in a note in i believe the second video like where i actually you know when i finished the tier list and i talked about the two episodes i had said i want to mark put cutie mark chronicles down a spot I love that episode. I think it's fantastic. I clearly do if it was in double S for quite a while. But I think, like, thinking about it more, Cutie Mark Chronicles is an S tier episode, but Party of One is the double S tier for season one. I might still have two for season two. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I don't know if I only have one double S. Because, man, they're really, really, really good. So we're just going to start with the first one. Because, you know, to be all two-parters, I just kind of consider one episode. I don't consider just, let me talk about the first half and let me talk about the second half. No, let's talk about the whole thing as one. So let's start with Return of Harmony. And what a phenomenal chef's kiss fucking start to the season it is. When all is said and done, I feel like there is a non-zero chance Return of Harmony might end up being my favorite episode of the series. There's definitely going to be some bangers coming up in other seasons. There's definitely some bangers coming up. Fuck. Literally, that, I mean, th this is the other one that's going to be up here. Like, let's be honest for a second. Like, the first three episodes are so fucking good. And then even then, it's like, banger, 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 dog shit, banger. <laughs> like the curve of season two is fucking wild but we'll get to that when we get to that we're starting here it starts off so strong what happens in this episode so this fucker the draconicus sorry my brain stopped for a second i think discord used some chaos on my brain maybe that's why half the times in my video i'll just get fucked up like it's discord magic mm. okay let me try that again equestria is a world all about friendship and harmony and you know like the peace between the races and shit i guess a little bit more on that here-ish so, of course, what is the natural enemy of that? It is disharmony. It is chaos. It is discord. He was an old nemesis of Celestia and Luna. And forever and a fuck ago, they used the elements of harmony. That, of course, being magic, laughter, kindness, honesty, generation. Generation. <laughs> I say generosity and I said generation. The What does that even mean, Goofy? <laughs> Uh, generosity and loyalty and made a, used a rainbow Kamehameha and turned him into stone. So now, thousand-ish-ish -ish years later, he is reawakened and he's just caught, he's just getting into mischief. He's just doing goofy shit. And it's one of the reasons I think Return of Harmony is so good, among many, many reasons, is because of Discord. Season 1 gives us Nightmare Moon, who's fine. It's like, oh yeah, it's a, she's evil and she believes in the night and shit. You're like, eh, hey, that's, that's okay. And then here at the end of the season, when we get Chrysalis, and it's like, yeah, like she's... Oh, we'll get to Chrysalis when we get to Chrysalis. Discord is fun. 
Discord has a really weird design that I fucking love. He has a chicken hand, a lion paw, a goat head. He has like two different kinds of horns. He's voiced by John Delancey because from what I understand, Lauren Faust is a big fan of Next Gen. And she's like, I want to write an antagonist that's just Q. And they're like, okay, who should we get to voice them? Well, whoever voices Discord because it's based on Q should be able to do a really good John Delancey impression. And someone, I don't know who it was, I don't know if it was Lauren Faust herself, but someone was like, well, I don't know, why don't we just ask John Delancey and see if he's down for it? And he was. <laughs> so, he just got to play Q again, and it's fantastic. I say that as someone who hasn't seen Next Gen, but I want to, partly because I've heard it's phenomenal, partly because of this fucking shit. <laughs> he's, his design is great, his voice is great, the fact that his evil plan is he's just fucking around and he's trolling people. Um, like, you've just got people doing, like, ballet dances. Uh, the corn is just exploding into popcorn. You have cotton candy clouds that are pouring chocolate rain. And everyone except Pinkie Pie is fucking weirded out and miserable. And Pinkie's like, no, hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second. What if we don't stop the bad guy? <laughs> like, can you tell me, can you look me into the windows of my soul for two seconds and tell me this is bad? And everyone's like, no, yeah, Pinky, this is really fucking bad. Okay, point taken, but hear me out. It's kind of neat. I love it. I love the scene when the main six first encounter Discord. They're, um, they're in the Canterlot Castle talking to Celestia, and... The stained glass painting of Discord comes alive and it just starts moving around and talking to them like, oh, this just looks cool. This is just so neat. Like, there's just so much cool visual shit you can do with this character. I remember a later episode in season three. I think it's, I think it's in Keep Calm and Flutter On, I'm not sure. Where at one point he like pops his eyes out of his sockets rolls them around in his hand like dice then throws them and then they roll forward land in a couple of holes like he like it's, he's playing fucking golf and then he's they're just in his eye in his fucking head again like it's just fun to watch him it's fantastic okay so anyways he shows up he's a problem they go to the castle like all right we got to get the elements of harmony oh shit they're not here because discord stole them and he tells him, he's like, okay, okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a game. I will tell you where the... I stole the shit. I'm going to tell you where it is. But I'm not going to tell you straight up. I am going to tell you my way. Because I just want to have fun at your expense. I just want to be a troll. Twists and turns are... What is it? It's twists and turns are my master plan. Then find the elements back where you begin. It's something very close to that. And... Twilight hears that's like, okay, twists and turns, twists and turns, looks outside. Oh, there's a big fucking labyrinth. Why don't we go in there? That's probably where he is. Twists and turns are his master plan. Blah, 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 blah. So the main six run into the labyrinth. They all, oh, so first off, Discord's like, okay, rule, two rules to our game. Number one, if anybody leaves, game is over. Second rule, actually, I might be getting the order of the rules reversed, but anyways, the other rule, no wings, no magic. So Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash get their wings taken away. Twilight and Rarity get their horns taken away. Pinkie Pie still has her cartoon magic, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, cool. Go, explore, find the shit, kick my ass, do whatever you gotta do. So they go into the uh they go into the maze. And it's the exact opposite of Friendship is Magic. Like the the episodes, not the premiere. In the episodes, Friendship is Magic, specifically in part two, Nightmare Moon is trying to, like, get rid of every member of the main six. But it, what it actually does is reinforce their element. Here, Discord does kind of a same thing of, here's how I'm going to get rid of you. And instead of it reinforcing their element, it's like a corruption of their element. Applejack is told that, hey, what's going to happen like, when all of this is said and done is you and your friends are going to get into a big fight and they're not going to be friends anymore. Like, this is going to break your friendship. So Applejack seeing that is like, oh, if this is the truth, then maybe the best way to get out of this is by lying. 
I don't want this to happen. So the way she's characterizing like the rest of the episode is just telling like the most bold faced lies and then making this stupid face like every time. And I think it's hysterical. I love Liar Jack. After that, I think is Pinky who goes to a party where everyone is just is laughing at her and not with her to in discord's like oh but pinky i thought you loved a good laugh well i do but it's not fun if they're laughing at me they should be laughing with me but your friends laugh at you all the time and like the balloons in the area just turn into her friends faces and they're just laughing at her and mocking her and Pinky's yelling at them to stop and they just keep laughing and it's like party of one all over again but severely condensed and then Discord's like, see, laughter's not that fun, is it? It's, uh, but it's just like, I thought it made you happy. And then after that, I think it's Grumpy Pie? Because I don't they don't I don't think they have official names, but I think it's just like the fan nicknames. I remember Liar Jack, Grumpy Pie. I don't remember what the others are. I flutter bitch. I remember that. I think Rainbow Dash is Rainbow Ditch. I don't know if Twilight actually really has one. I don't remember what Rarity is. is. It might just be, I don't know, maybe it's just like greedy or something. But Rarity is not, so yeah, Pinky after that, like she just becomes like really grumpy all the time and very irritable. Then you get to Rarity, which might be the funniest thing in all in both episodes. And again, this is with Discord being himself. Rarity might be funnier. Rarity comes across uh, some... De so, yeah. Each of them, the form that Discord takes is their cutie mark, which is another thing I think is just really neat, like ways to corrupt them and fuck with them. So she finds these three gems in a rock. And he's like, congratulations, Rarity. You found the one thing in Equestria that could rival my face for sheer beauty. It's yours if you want. She's like, no, I can't. Twilight needs me. My friends need me. Equestria needs me. I can't do this. Must resist mine. <laughs> she just like fucking digs it. And she digs it out. And instead of it being three small gems, it's a giant fucking diamond. When the rest of the crew find her, it is not a diamond. It's just a big fucking rock that she's just hauling on her back the entire rest of the two-parter. And there's a point in part two where she specifically names it Tom. And I love it. I just love the scene where Twilight gets... Is she when she is just officially done with everyone and their bullshit? Here comes Tom and just like fucking yeets it out of the library, like busting a giant boulder sized hole in the library. It is gold. Next is Fluttershy, and Discord is trying to corrupt her and be like, Oh, Fluttershy, your friends, you know, they think you're so helpless, sympathetic, and you're such a pushover. And every time he says anything, she just agrees. She's like, oh, I am a pushover. But I am weak and helpless. And I'm so glad that my friends are my friends anyways. And he's just starting to get really mad and frustrated that he can't break her. So he just stops. He's like, fuck it. If I can't play the game, I'm just going to cheat and win. Smacks her on the head and hit this. He's like, it's time to be cruel. I need an energy. And I fucking love that. I think it's hysterical. And it's, there's a part of my brain that goes, Fluttershy should not have been the one to befriend Discord. It should have been Pinkie Pie because she is the one who, from the word go, it's like, no, hold on a second, guys. This dude is awesome. I kind of like his plan. <laughs> he just gets to do fun, goofy shit. Like, they get on really well. Maybe it should have been Pinkie Pie that befriends him. I mean, this is an entire episode about how Pinkie Pie wants to be friends with everybody. And if someone is not her friend, it makes her very upset. And she is going to annoy that person <laughs> into friendship submission. She should have been the one to befriend Discord. But then you get this scene where... Discord can't break her. He could break everyone else, but he could not break Fluttershy without just snapping his fingers and using magic on her. And it shows that she is... She is at least a perfect friend for him. 
and I do like their relationship as it progresses too. And like, I, it, it's great. It's so fucking great. So after he fails to, he fails to corrupt Fluttershy on his own terms. So he cheats and corrupts her anyways, which leads to Flutterbitch, who is just mean and awful and like hitting people and slapping them with their tail and throwing buckets on people's heads. And it's great. It's really fucking funny. Just the corrupted... I don't know what their actual name is. Like, I, I know there's an episode later called The Mean Six where Chrysalis ends up bringing the Discorded... I just tend to refer to them as the Discorded versions. When she brings the Discorded versions of the Main Six back into reality. So if I remember correctly, it's the Main Six and Glim Glamour in the Everfree Forest. And they keep, like, getting separated and interacting with the mean six and it's gold it is one of my favorite episodes because i remember watching it and i was like cracking up the entire time i am so excited to get is it season six no it can't be season six because season six is um that's when the misfits go to fight chrysalis so it has to be after that i think it might be season eight i know it's not season nine I don't think it's season 70. I think it's a season 8 episode. That's really fucking late. But I remember it being so damn funny. I am really excited for it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chrysalis is just not even slowly losing her mind. She's already broken by that point. But she's completely fucking bonkers by the time that episode's going. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. And here, they're just as fantastic. Because you have Twilight... She is the one who is slowly losing her mind as the episode progresses. And then it ends with Rainbow Dash. And Discord tells her, he's like, alright, here's the thing, Rainbow Dash. Cloudsdale is literally crumbling without you, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can stay here and play this game with no hope of winning. Or you can go save your home, be loyal to your home. And here's your wings, go. And Dash is like, alright, okay, bye. She flies off, that's how the episode ends. Then you get to part two. Which is, they go back to Ponyville, they try to beat Discord, but they can't because they're the corrupted versions of themselves, and Rainbow Dash isn't there, <laughs> which leads to a great meme with, um, uh, Spike's like, hey, how is this gonna work? Rainbow Dash isn't here. Congratulations, you're the new Rainbow Dash. <laughs> and Discord seeing four corrupted versions of the main six an uncorrupted twilight and fucking spike in the place of rainbow dash gives literally no fucks like okay ladies let's go i'm defeated and draws a giant target on his bed like fire when ready it doesn't work discord's laughing his ass off and they're like okay well this didn't work you guys all suck no you guys suck no you guys suck so they all break up Twilight is now heartbroken that her friends all fucking suck. She now becomes corrupted herself. And she decides to leave Ponyville. And she has a short conversation with Discord who realizes, he's like, I got her. I fucking broke her. I win. Then Celestia starts sending a bunch of letters to Spike, which are all of the letters that Twilight wrote to Twilight and her friends wrote over the course of season one. Which is why there's a part of me that says, is this a better season premiere or would have been better as a season finale for season one? Because as much as I love Best Night Ever, don't get me wrong, I think I heard originally Return of Harmony was going to be the finale of season one. And I think that works really well. With, like all the letters coming back. It's like, no, like these are your friends. These are the memories you have with them. This is what you learned from them. And it's what makes you... It's what makes you better, and you've made them better, and you have the moral from this episode, which, like, when they all get back together, and they tell she tells Discord, you're right, friendship isn't easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. And then they fire another rainbow Kamehameha. This one actually works. He's like, oh, fuck. And then he's defeated. This is... Like I said, this is a double S tier episode, man. It's so good discord's cool as fuck he's funny as hell the corrupted versions of the main six i think are all hilarious there's just a lot of good shit here it's like i said it might end up being my favorite episode of the whole ding dang show by the time this is done 
that would not surprise me. There's a very strong chance that it will just be the best two-parter when all is said and done. Now let me talk about the other double S tier episode of the season, because I can't pick between these two. Because Lesson Zero, also when everything is said and done, might be the best ding-dang episode of the whole fucking show. Uh, the plot of Lesson Zero is Twilight has not written a letter to Celestia in a week. And she thinks to herself, I am a student. I am essentially studying abroad. And part of my assignment is to send my teacher a report every week about what I've done and what I've learned. If I don't send her in anything, it means I'm late. I'm tardy. And she might think I'm a bad student. And if she thinks I'm a bad student who's not taking my study seriously, she might get really mad at me. To the point where it's like, what if she gives me a test? What if I fail? Do you know what they do to students who fail? They send them back a grade and not just any grade. Magic kindergarten. And I feel like it's the first time you really see neurotic Twilight. Because I don't think she... Like, feeling Pinky Keen is kind of there. But I don't feel like she's quite neurotic in that episode. She's like, no, this is... No, I mean, she is. She is. It's very obsessive. Like, this is wrong, and I'm going to prove it right. And I don't care what I have to do. I don't care how much cartoon damage I take. I am going to do... Yes, is it? <clears throat> this is Neurotic Twilight perfected. Just the way her, like, how deranged her voice gets, her expressions, the fact that, like, the windmill in the background starts moving like the hands of a clock, the fact that the sun starts going like the hands of a clock. Like, clock is ticking, Twilight. Clock is ticking. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Ponyville is a dysfunction junction. What's your malfunction kind of rinky-dink shithole? There is going to be a problem. Let's see what Applejack is up to. She's probably got a problem. Oh, look! Rainbow Dash is destroying her property! They must hate each other! Easy shit. I can fix this. I can talk to them and they'll be fine. What do you mean you were paying her to destroy your barn because you want to make a new one? What do you mean you two don't hate each other? We had an entire episode of that last season. What do you mean I helped you fix that problem? Fuck! Okay, um... Let's go to Rarity. Rarity probably has some kind of problem. Oh my god, Rarity has literally no problems for me. Okay, it, okay, it's fine, it's fine. There's always Fluttershy. Good old reliable Fluttershy. Sweet, sweet issues out the yin-yang Fluttershy. And she goes and sees Fluttershy fucking beat the shit out of a bear and snap its neck. And in pure terror, Twilight just leaves. And then it cuts back to Fluttershy massaging the bear's shoulders. She's like, you should have come to me sooner. You have so much tension in these shoulders. And I, I think it's hysterical. So, after these... Because I don't think she ever goes to Pinky. She meets up with her friends for like a planned picnic. Actually, she meets up with Spike first, who throughout the episodes, like Twilight, you are literally worrying about nothing. This is really, really dumb. You are going to be okay. Please just listen to reason. And Twilight being so in her own neurotic genjutsu, she can't listen to him. So then she goes to her friends, and they're like, hey, like, are you okay? Like, something's clearly wrong. She's like, no, I'm not okay. I'm really stressed. I'm really worried. And she explains what the problem is, and they all start laughing. They're like, really? This is what you're, this is what you're so stressed out about? That's, that's not a big deal. Trust us, it's not a big deal. Just 
calm down, eat a cupcake, which makes her more angry that they're not taking her seriously, to which her response is just, ugh, ugh. <laughs> she's just like loudly groaning as she trots away and it's gold. So then she's, we get to the, if I can't find a friendship problem, I'll make a friendship problem. So she takes her old doll, Miss Smarty Pants, which is this really raggedy old looking piece of shit. Finds the Crusaders who are playing with a beach ball, teleports inside the beach ball so it explodes with this psychotic look on her face. Hi, girl. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love this episode so much. And the Crusaders are like, hey, Twilight? Like, well, what's good? You, you, you good? <laughs> you good? Yeah, I'm... I'm good. I'm so good. And you know what? I've been inspired. Like, I just want to do something nice for you girls. See, this is Miss Smarty Pants. She was my doll, and I was your age, and I, I, I want to pay it forward. I want to give her to you. I just hope that the fact that there are three of you and only one of her doesn't become a problem. The problem is none of the three of them want to play with the shitty thing. So they're all trying to convince, they're all trying to duck out of playing with it. And I, I, I keep saying this, especially in these first two episodes, but it's really funny. And Twilight is seeing that it's not working and it's making her more frustrated because clock is ticking. It's almost sundown. She's almost late. So she casts the want it, need it spell on Miss Smarty Pants. So he's like, okay, if you guys don't want her, I'm going to make you. I'm gonna make you want this doll so fucking bad and then I will be the one to teach you that I don't know sharing is caring like a fucking juicy fruit commercial so she casts the spell which leads the crusaders starting like a fucking looney tunes dog pile over it and then everyone else in the town starts seeing it which makes them get into it and blah blah blah, blah and it ends up escalating until Celestia God herself shows up and, like, cancels out the spell. It's like, Twilight, I'm going to meet you in your house. And we're going to talk about this. So, Celestia is like, Twilight, first off, this was really, really stupid of you to do that. Second, I don't care. Like, I know you're doing, I know you're taking your studies seriously. I don't care that you're a day late. It's fine. Like, she's in the middle of having this conversation when the rest of the main six bolts in. I think Rainbow Dash, like, kicks down the door, does a flip, and then, like, lands. Like, that's really neat. And they all tell Princess Lost, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please don't blame Twilight for this. Yeah, she did something really dumb, but we did not take her seriously. And as her friends, that's on us. When a friend comes to you with a problem, you need to take them seriously. Now, you can still tell them that you can... It's like, compare the way they were handling it to the way Spike was handling it. Spike was telling her, this is fucking stupid. But he was also trying to have, like, a logical conversation. About it. Like, okay, this is what you're thinking. Here's why you're wrong. Let's talk about it. Like, he showed genuine concern and tried to address it. And he's the one that called up Celestia and was like, yo, Twilight's like not okay. You need to come down and talk to her. Whereas the other members of the main five, I guess, yeah, the other members of the main six, that'd be the remaining five, um, just kind of dismiss her like, you know, this is dumb. Don't worry about it. Just chill without trying to address the problem at all. And like, that's on us. So what did Twilight learn? Don't be a neurotic piece of shit. What did they learn? When your friend is in trouble, you talk to them. And then what did the show learn? Because it's... Lesson Zero is a really good episode because it's funny as hell. Lesson Zero is an incredibly important episode. Because this is the episode where at the end Celestia is like, Cool. I want to get reports from all of y'all. It doesn't just have to be Twilight. Anytime, like, here's, here's my compromise then. I will forgive all of you if whenever you have something to share with me, I don't care if it's every week, 
It can be whenever you tell me what you found. It is the show's way of write, and not having to write Twilight into every single episode. Because she's in every episode of season one, even when she doesn't need to be. There is no reason for Twilight to be in Showstoppers. She just is because she's the main character. Twilight really doesn't need to be in Stairmaster. But she's the main character, so she just kind of is. I like the fact that they said, we're not going to put her in everything because she doesn't need to be in everything. When we have stuff for her to do, whether she is the lead character, whether it's an everybody episode, or she can just like play some good support, we will let her do that. Also, the fact that it feels like it's just kind of a parody of the fact that every episode, like, yeah, yeah, yeah let me try that again. The episode feels like a satire of the fact that shows are every week and have to have a moral and a character trying to find the moral of their show, I think is really funny. <laughs> like, wheel of morality, turn, 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 tell us the lesson that we should learn. And the moral to today, today's story is, Twilight doesn't need to be in every episode. So, one of the funniest episodes of the show, one of the most important episodes of the show, I feel like it is 1,000% deserving of a double S tier spot, along with Return of Harmony. Nothing else here is going to be up here with them. I can promise you that. That also means for the S tier, they have to be episodes that can really compete with these two. And I'm going to be honest... There might be, I feel like there will be less S-tier episodes in season two, given its stiff competition. However, there's gonna be a lot of fucking A-tier episodes, because a lot of these are really, really good. And I mean, yeah, like I, like I normally do, I will normally kind of put something in the middle of the screen before I talk about it, but with these, I was like, eh. no, like we're putting them right where they're gonna go immediately, because I feel like with these, I kind of had to. But now we get to talk about Luna Eclipsed. This was the first episode to have Princess Luna after the premiere. It is the Nightmare Night episode, which is the Halloween episode. Uh, I think that's the beat to Nightmare Night. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've listened to it, but uh, the song's kind of a bop. I'm not even going to lie. It is a fucking bop. I love this fucking episode. <laughs> Um, first off, it's the Halloween episode, so, like, I love that. I love all the fucking decorations, like, the Eye of Sauron over there. I like a lot of the costumes. Uh, Twilight goes to Star Swirl the Bearded, which is the first time he is mentioned. He's, like, the Merlin of this universe. And I love, what I love about it is no one except for Luna knows what the costume is because she knew Star Swirl personally. And Twilight is so proud of her costume and how accurate it is, and no one gets it. And Luna's just like, oh no, like, that's, that is 100% accurate. That's a great fucking costume. I'm like, thank you! I know I'm about to talk to you about, like, some important shit. Thank you for letting me know. I love it. Oh yeah, I need to talk about the actual plot of the episode. Um, so Nightmare Night is this, is there a version of Halloween, which is about how Nightmare Moon's gonna come down and gobble you. So Princess Luna comes down to Ponyville and is like, Citizens of Ponyville! Because that's how she talks. It's the Royal Cancer Lot voice where she's just really fucking loud. She shows up and is like, look, I, we, because she also speaks in the Royal Way, they're like, I am here to, A, get to know my subjects and my people, but also, I kind of find this holiday really offensive, because it's talking about me and like the per the horrible person I used to be and I'm not that anymore. Can we not make this a holiday about how I'm this scary bitch who wants to eat children? Please? And Luna un unintentionally terrifying everybody. And slowly but surely getting more frustrated, getting more dejected. And by the end of it, though, kind of getting into the spirit of it, it's like, you know what? It's Halloween. People like being scared. 
So I can lean into that. I can appreciate the fact that they have a whole thing where they're being scared of me. I All right, it's kind of neat. That's what the episode is. Like, that's the plot of the episode. Why the episode is great. Like I was saying, it's Halloween. I love all these costumes. Twilight is Star Swirl. Applejack is a fucking scarecrow. And I'm like, no, that makes sense. I kind of dig it. Rainbow Dash is wearing a Shadow Bolt outfit. I'm like, that's really fucking cool, actually. I, I think that's neat as hell. Pinky's just a chicken. She is literally dressed as a chicken. And, and I'm actually thinking about it like, yeah, chicken, because she wants to be scared. Like, oh, fuck, that's a good joke. Um, She spends the entire episode making things worse by every time Luna shows up. Be like, it's Luna! It's like one and then she had all the kids that she's going trick-or-treating with he's like pinky aren't you a little old to trick or be trick-or-treating did you just insinuate i'm too old for free candy no no fair enough so like anytime luna does every anything she just like screams how terrified she is and incentivizes everybody to run which is making luna more and more mad so twilight by the end of the episode is like pinky i need you to do me a favor I need you to shut up, not scream, and listen. Like, she is not going to gobble you up. She's not going to like, yeah, duh. Of course she's not going to gobble me up. I'm an adult. Then why are you running and acting like she's going to eat you? Because it's Halloween. It's fun. <laughs> like, I'm getting into the spirit of things. I'm pretending that I'm scared, and it's a bit... Duh! <laughs> I, I don't know, I just really kind of fuck with that. Um, There's also this dude named Pip. Pip. I can't call him Little Pip, because that's Fallout Equestria. But he has this really British accent, and I don't know, I just think that's kind of fun. Um, Rainbow Dash is just going around being a piece of shit and pranking people, and I think it's funny. It's pretty mean-spirited, but it's Rainbow Dash. She's an awful person. Oh, um actually what episodes are no okay we'll get to that later we'll get to it here and here where rainbow dash being the piece of shit friend kind of works in her favor i i, I don't know i i think it's really cool um what's the other thing in this? oh and just like luna herself i love her design i think because in the first episode she's a lot smaller Instead of this, like, dark blue, almost black, it's a very light blue. I think this is a much better look for Luna. The Royal Canterlot voice, where she's just screaming, I think is really funny. Um, just some of her lines, like, the fun has been doubled, or how many points do I receive? Like, I, I just love it. I love how energetic she is. She's just really fun and funny. I know I said the competition for S-tier episodes is stiff because of how goaded these are. This is an S-tier episode. I love Luna Eclipsed. Now we get to the Sisterhood of Social, which is a very important episode in the vein of Lesson Zero. This is the first episode without Twilight Sparkle in it. And because uh, Clay has been kind of watching the episodes off and on with me, he's like, huh. You know, until you brought it up, I just didn't even notice. Like, yeah, like, I remember. This was the first episode without Sparks. The plot of this episode is Sweetie Belle is going over to Rarities to stay the night. I, I think it was, like, for a few days. It's when you first meet their parents? I don't remember their parents showing up that much in the show or us really getting to know them. And I kind of think about it. I'm like, huh. All right, let's look at Twilight's family. Like, I don't really know much about her parents. Like, do her parents, like, have lines in the show? I mean, I think they probably said something during the wedding, but I don't know. But, I mean, there's her brother. Like, we get to know Twy's brother later. Applejack, we get to know her immediate family, the extended family. And, oh, boy, is there an episode about her parents. Rainbow Dash has an episode about her parents. Fluttershy, there's Fluttershy. Fluttershy has an episode with her family. We get to meet her brother, and I fucking re I remember how funny her brother is. <laughs> like he's so annoying, and it's great. And I remember like he has this huge thing for Rainbow Dash, who can't stand him, and he comes back, and like I think it's an episode 200, which is the one that the voice actors wrote. 
because my understanding for that was um the kind of the writing team was like okay guys this is the last season what do you as the voice actors really want to do in an episode and from what i understand that's episode 200 and i think it was rainbow dash's voice actor who's also Applejack's. Uh, Ashley Ball, I think she had said, like, I just want to have a scene where Rainbow Dash has to flirt with him and not want to do it, like, have to distract him, and it's fucking cold. Um, we definitely meet Pinky's family, and then her sister, I mean, she has three sisters, but the sister that's not in the season one flashback is genuinely one of the best characters in the entire show. But yeah, it's like, I don't really remember their parents having any like semblance of character but anyways point went on a long tangent there that's how you know it's a Jigenwa video that's one for the fucking bingo card um sweetie is staying a night or two and is constantly just fucking with rarity shit like oh look it's this like one-of-a-kind sweater that's never supposed to be washed or like never supposed to be like washed in this cup no I mean, it's dry it's, like, it's, it's dry clean only uh and ends up shriveling and getting really fucked up so now rarity can't wear it rarity's um like her room as she describes like it is not a mess it is organized chaos and i totally understand that she's like this is my creative space where i get my shit done it is messy it is messy for a reason this is how i work this is how i think sweetie wanting to be a good sister cleans it up sweetie makes art using rarity's really expensive shit that she was going to use for something else so rarity gets mad at her so after rarity keeps getting mad at sweetie bell every time sweetie bell tries to do something nice for her sister sweetie says you know what fuck this and fuck you so she goes over to sweet apple acres to hang out with apple bloom and applejack and it's like man why can't my relationship with my sister be actually good like you two you know what fuck this applejack's my new sister and uh while this is going on rarity is back home and it's like huh you know that sweater of mine that i can't wear would actually fit really well on opal and that's adorable so i guess i can't be mad at sweetie for that okay my room all of my inspiration is gone oh the shit i was doing is gone but i guess now i have to start from scratch and huh okay i actually kind of have an idea let me do oh oh i was able to make some shit like real quick and easy huh you know maybe sweet it kind of do me a solid and then she sees the art that her sister made and she's like oh it's so cute my sister loves me so she goes to sweet apple acres to get sweet but he's like no applejack's my sister now so Applejack is just really confused. Apple Bloom is kind of mad that her sister's being taken from her. And Rarity's like, what the, what the fuck? Applejack. I think she's like, Applejack, why do you have to be so good and make me look so bad? It's really funny. And Applejack's like, okay. um, Gee, I don't know, Rarity. I think you're just bad at this. So the episode Sisterhood of Social is that uh, the, the title is referring to an event which is supposed to be like sisters go to Sweet Apple Acres and compete in various shit like uh, running and hatching chicken eggs. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Like they, it's like it's a big obstacle course. That's what, that's what it is. So Sweetie Belle enters with Applejack and a apple bloom basically tells her it's like okay you can have my sister for a day you get one <laughs> remember sweetie one and halfway through the course not even halfway it's like almost immediately so like very very quickly into the obstacle course rarity and applejack switch places uh they fall applejack falls into a mud hole where rarity was waiting and then rarity pops out covered in mud because she wants to be able to do something nice with her sister. She wants to play with her sister. And then afterwards, Sweetie Belle's like, holy shit. That was you the whole time I was having fun with? That was you covered in mud? You did all that to hang out with me? Thank you. Like, oh god, now I'm remembering. 
There's a movie you may or may not have seen or even heard of. It's a David Lynch film called The Straight Story. Which is about a man named Alvin Straight who, if I remember correctly, his brother had a seizure or stroke and was not doing super well. And he and his brother hadn't seen each other in a long time. They were having some kind of feud. So Alvin decides, I'm going to go visit my brother. And I'm not going to take a car or a train or like a plane. <laughs> no planes, trains, or automobiles. I am going to ride my tractor across several states to go see my brother. And despite it being a David Lynch film, it is not like a super weird movie. It's not a very out there movie. It is this long, arduous film about a man traveling on a fucking tractor. And when you get to the end of the movie and he sees his brother and he gets up and he like goes on the porch to see him and his brother looks at him and he looks at the tractor and he asks him like, did you, and his brother's like very clearly like choking up, like trying not to cry asking him this because he's realizing what his brother just went through to see him. Like, did you really ride all the way out here on this just to see me and his brother just tells him yep and that's the end of the movie this is kind of what that is rarity going like that's kind of like sweetie at the end of the episode it's like wait you like miss prim proper and all that shit waited in a fucking mud hole so that way you could come out and run an obstacle course with me, getting yourself even more dirty. Just because he wanted to spend time with me? Yeah. You're my sister. I love you. Like, that, that's a really sweet episode. It's really good. You don't need sparks for the show to have its spark. <laughs> like, it's really, really good. It's not an S-tier episode, though. And here's why. Partly, again, stiff competition. To me, the section of the episode where Rarity is realizing, hey, Sweetie Belle might have fucked with my shit, but I guess there were some unintended... Co like, hmm. Rarity, or Sweetie Belle was doing something really nice for me. I was really bothered by it, but actually, the nice thing she did was really nice, so I'm okay with it. I don't love that section. The reason I don't love that section is because I look at that and go, Rarity is 100% justified to be mad that her sister is fucking with her shit. That, like, she's, it's like, yeah, like, okay. Maybe the sweater does look really good on Opal and that's adorable. Sweetie still fucked with that. And maybe it's just a me thing. I do not like people messing with my stuff. At all. Like, it bothers me and a lot of that is because as someone who has had to move a lot there have been a lot of times where i just haven't had my stuff with me there have been times where people have moved my stuff during a move but i had no idea where the fuck it was so i'm like cool like oh gosh um it was a few years ago my family was going to do another move and a lot of our stuff got packed up and moved to another house several states over. Then the move didn't happen. It's like more of kind of like a like a vacation house, essentially. So a lot of my shit I no longer had access to. And there were a couple times that I went to the other house to, you know, find my shit and bring it back. And it was really fucking hard to find it because I didn't know where it was. And it's like, all right, here's like my movies and my games. And some of it is here, but then some of it is here. Then some of it is here. I'm like, oh, why? Just why? Ah, so that whole section about, hey, she might have completely messed with all of my stuff, but she did it because she wanted to be nice to me. 
And I guess the unintended consequences of what she did were kind of nice. So it's okay. Personally, it very much rubs me the wrong way. I think it's still a great episode. I think it's a lovely episode. It is not an S tier episode. Cutie Pox. This is an episode where Apple Bloom and her droogs. Um, what was it that caused it? I think it was just Diamond Tiara being a bully. Like, you guys still don't have your cutie marks? Oh my god. I think it was just some shit like that. And several... Oh, that's right. Cause, was this the Tree Sap episode? No, I think that was Cutie Mark Chronicles. It's like, man surprisingly often we're covered in tree sap after failure like they're trying to get their cutie marks doing shit it's not where it's not working and scootaloo's like man this kind of sucks but it is what it is and sweet bell's like man i mean it kind of sucks but it is what it is and apple bloom's like i am having a fucking existential crisis over the fact that i don't have this damn thing it's bothering me i'm so mad because i feel like i am inferior to the other girls and boys, like, but it's mostly girls and Ponyville, like, to the other girls that already have it. Fucking snips and snails have their cutie marks. Why don't I? Diamond Tiara will not shut up about it, and it's driving me nuts. I don't want to, I don't want to not have this thing anymore. So she goes over to her friend Zakora, you know, call back to bridal gossip of the two of the big homies. I really like that. And she's like, Zakora, can you help me with it? Like, do you have anything to give me a cutie mark? Nah. <laughs> no, fam. It don't work like that. Um, it'll come in time. I know that's what everyone tells you, and I know you don't want to hear it. But that's the way destiny works. It's like a wizard. It doesn't arrive late. It arrives exactly when it's supposed to. It will come when you are ready for it. Okay? Okay. By the way, since you're here, can you help me with some potion making? Sure. What's up? Uh, give me some of that heart's desire over there. Uh, I'm sorry. It's called what? Heart's desire. You know, it'll like give you, it'll like, you know, give you exactly what you want and what you need and shit. And Apple will be like, oh, 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 oh. I can see what's happening and I don't have a clue. So she uses the heart's desire on herself, which gives her a cutie mark of a loop-de-hoop. It's like a little hula hoop thing. And her friends are like, dude, you got it. It's so badass. And then so Apple Bloom just spends like 10 minutes, not, not that long. It's like a few minutes just doing tricks with a hula hoop. And I love it. <laughs> I really do. Like, this is honestly really fun. This is just kind of neat as fuck. But then she gets another cutie mark with uh, plate balancing. And then she's just starts have to, has to do that. Which then leads to, you know, like, a, that's it. Because she does the hula hoop for, like, a couple minutes. And then the next thing happens. And then she keeps getting more things and adding them into her repertoire of talents of, like, her traveling street show. <laughs> And then about halfway through, it becomes clear that she just can't stop. This is not just like, oh, cool, you have like a talent. You have a couple talents. That's the, oh, no, there's a problem. So they try to look into it, try to figure it out. It's called cutie pox, but it's, there's no cure. It's pretty bad, blah, 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 blah. Then Sakura comes into town and is like, what the fuck's going on? Like, man, I thought we fixed the shit of me coming into town and people being closed, but nothing's open. Because people know about Apple Bloom's sickness and think it's contagious, and Zakora's like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Apple Bloom, I'm gonna plant this flower that only responds to people being honest, and you have to tell me the truth because I know you stole my shit. I know you stole that ingredient and what you did with it. But I want to hear you say it. The flower needs to hear you say it. So come on. And then Apple Bloom's like, ah, I mean, I didn't. Really? Really? But I mean, I didn't. Okay, I did. She tells the truth and the truth sets her free and she gets cured and Flank is still blank and that's the episode. 
It's the best Crusader episode of the season. And aside from Cutie Mark Chronicles, it's the best Crusader episode so far. And to me, that one almost doesn't count. Because it feels like it's about the main six and their friendship. The Crusaders are just the vehicle to tell that story. This is a full-on just like Apple Bloom episode. And I honestly think the Cutie Pox itself is such a fun idea. Shout out Story of the Blind. But it's like such a fun idea that I love it. Like, I again, like there's just this long sequence of her like going down the street and performing. I'm like, this is fun. It's really fun. It's really neat. Um, I mean, it's not up here. It's no lower than here. Honestly, I would probably put it here. I really like this episode. And I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, did I just watch a Crusader episode and fucking love it? What the hell? Because I didn't care for Showstoppers the first time I watched it. I thought it was annoying as hell. I've come around on it, clearly. I think it's funny. This one's just really good. What is this episode called? I think it's called May the Best Pet Win. It's... I, mean, I just noticed the pet episode. It's the tank episode. It's the one where there's this big show-stopping musical number about Rainbow Dash saying, Fluttershy, I really want a pet. I want something that can fly because I fly, and I want it to be something cool. And Fluttershy spending a good chunk of the song recommending all of these other pets that can't fly. And Rainbow Dash getting annoyed. And I, I talked about their relationship before and how it's, They've been friends forever, so they have that tenuredness, whereas I feel like Rainbow Dash is like, I've been close to you for so long. I, it's justified when I get annoyed with your shit, like when I have a short patience with you, because I've known you so long. And I'm still friends with you, you know I care, but your bullshit does get on my nerves. I think there's something kind of funny about that, and actually kind of realistic about that too i think it's great but then fluttershy's like oh you want something that can fly okay um then after that rainbow dash has a fucking like miss america pageant for like all these different categories to determine what the best pet is and the last thing is a race and there's a tortoise, not a turtle, he's a tortoise. A tortoise who really wants to be her pet, and Fluttershy's like, please, Rainbow, just let him try to compete. And, I mean, the second you see the turtle, tortoise, oh, whatever, the second you see it during the song, you know she's picking it. Be like, oh, I get it, it's a tortoise in the hair kind of thing. Got it, I get what we're doing here. And that's Tank. Her fucking... T I love Tank. Tank is probably my second favorite pet. I'm assuming Spike doesn't go. <laughs> like, he's not her pet, but there, there's jokes about how Twilight is... Or Spike is actually Twilight's pet. The best pet is Gummy, and that's not even close. And that's even before you get to episode 100. Gummy is goaded as fuck. Tank is my second favorite. I fucking love Tank. I feel like... This is just a really fun episode. Kind of problematic. Really. Like, Rainbow Dash, are you a terrible person? It's like, I don't know. This, Some of this is kind of a bit much. I think even her friends are like, this is kind of a bit much. Even for Rainbow Dash. I love it, though. I don't... Again, it's like here at least... I don't think I can say that. Which feels weird to say that... Yeah, there's a Crusader episode that would be an S tier, but a Rainbow Dash episode that isn't, excluding the obvious. Um, but I don't think I would quite put this in S tier, but I do like it a lot. Like, I really like this episode. I don't know, maybe it is? I don't think so. I feel like this for sure, this one, the kind of surprisingly, I like that much. I feel like this one's a solid A tier. Then we get to Meriduel. Let, let's put it where it belongs. It's an F-tier episode. It's the worst episode of the season. It, but I don't even think it's, like, that bad re-watching it. Because I went into this remembering how terrible this episode was. I was like, this might be the worst episode of the show. 
I don't think it's as bad as the Aloysius episode. I don't know. Maybe as I talk, I'll be convinced to put it down here. But let's talk about what the episode is and why it's dog shit. Because I think it was watching this episode. There might have been another one, too. I think it might have also been this one or this one or this one. That kind of made me realize what makes a bad episode of Friendship is Magic. Not to say that all three of these are bad episodes, but I don't love it. We'll, 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 we'll get to them when we get to them. What What is this episode about? Rainbow Dash becomes a local hero because... I don't know, it was like some fucking baby needed saving, and she saved the baby. And people were like, yo, that was so cool, you're like our hero. I mean, it, it was nothing. I, I, I was just helping, I just wanted to, you know, do something nice. Someone needed to do something, so I said, no, you're like a hero to us. And her friend's like, man, that Rainbow Dash is so cool. And then it happens a couple other times with there just being incidents around town, Rainbow Dash is helping, and... People being like, people are really stoking the fires of Rainbow Dash's ego, which is already in itself kind of a roaring inferno, given the person that she is. And what's really notable to me is, especially when you remember Sonic Rainbow, Rainbow Dash is bravado. She has so much self-doubt, I don't think she really believes in herself all that much. She just pretends that she does. So very early on, when people are like, man, you did a good thing, thank you. She's actually being humble. She's like, no, it's not a big deal. Anyone would have done it. I just did what I, I thought should happen. And you can feel the sincerity in it. Then, when more, she keeps doing more, sh like, Rainbow Dash is chasing that high. Of people genuinely believing in her because she doesn't believe in herself. So, she keeps trying to go out of her way to help people. Now, at the earlier part of the episode, it is still just like, no, I'm doing a good thing. But she's getting that positive reinforcement and becomes addicted to it. And because she's Rainbow Dash and has that bravado and that massive ego, she becomes kind of insufferable. So her friends are starting to get really fucking annoyed with her. So, another hero shows up in town. This Darkwing Duck looking ass. The mysterious Mare-Duel who goes around, solves problems, and doesn't, doesn't say anything. Doesn't get accolades and blah 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 blah. Slowly but surely upstaging Rainbow Dash till Rainbow Dash is no longer in the spotlight and is incredibly desperate to help people so she can still get that high and have people genuinely believe in her the way she doesn't believe in herself. By the end of the episode, it's revealed that who is this mysterious mare do well? It's the Remain 5, of course. Well, not Rarity. Rarity never goes out in costume, but she designed the ding-dang thing. Applejack is there whenever things, uh, some, you need someone really strong. Twilight's there when you need magic. Pinkie Pie is there with her pinky sense predicting disasters. And Fluttershy is there when you just need something with wings real quick to throw off Rainbow Dash off the trail. And the reason they do this, they're like, Rainbow... You were fucking insufferable. You see, a real hero is all about handling a situation with dignity and humility. And, you know, they're not going to break their wrists jerking themselves off. But you were kind of doing that. You've, you're you just annoying. And rather than us talking... No, okay. It's there. Rather than us talking to you about it, we decided to go out of our way to upstage you and humiliate you. What makes this a bad episode of Friendship is Magic is how insufferable the main characters are when you, when you figure it out. And it's not like it's that hard to figure it out either. Again, it's, if they had talked to her, like, Rainbow Dash, you're really being a problem, 
And then she, like, kind of tells them to go fuck themselves. Like, okay, now let's take matters into our own hands. You get it. They're a lot more justified. Like, okay, if talking doesn't work, we have to show. You know, actions speak louder than words. She didn't hear the words. Let's show her the action. Here, they don't do that. They just kind of share this look of, she's being a bitch. She thinking what I'm thinking. I was thinking it yesterday. Then they do this, and then Rainbow Dash has this scene when she's, like, in Sugar Cube Corner talking to the Remain Five. I think Spike is there, too. About how frustrated she is. It's like, man, there was some asshole who's come into town, stolen my thunder, and, like, ah! Her friend's response, I, I think, actually, you know, what happens is what Rainbow Dash is in there, like, clearly mad, and so the Remain Five are just... Like, man, that Meriduel is so fucking cool. And Twilight's like, yeah, like, the way she uses magic is so dope. And Applejack's like, shoot, you know, she's strong as fuck. Like, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's not even that, like, each of them is complimenting what someone else did under the cowl. They're all complimenting what they did under the cowl. And you can make the argument that the idea is, A, they are being like insufferable and cocky to rainbow dash and rubbing it in so she knows what it's like and how annoying it is and they're kind of trying to lay it on thick like gee me the unicorn who's really good at magic is saying wow boy she's really good at magic wink wink and applejack going shoot she's really cheapers mister you're really strong <laughs> Fuck, I love Hercules. But, um, like, them complimenting themselves, you can make the argument of it's not that they're drinking their own Kool-Aid. It's they're trying to make it very clear to Rainbow Dash, this is how annoying you are, and we're clearly the ones doing it to teach you a lesson. I kind of see it as them drinking their own Kool-Aid, though, which makes the entire moral of the episode not work you remember boast busters and how the whole plot of the episode was being a braggadocious boastful asshole is annoying that's what you five are now doing there's also the fact that at the end of the episode the town like throws a parade and shit for Mirduel that Mirduel goes to so again the whole point of like you know a hero doesn't like a, a hero is supposed to be humble and like not accept all these accolades and be annoying now you guys are going to your own fucking parade. Like, no, you, you're kind of doing that. And I don't know if that's intentional. If kind of the point of the episode is also like, no, it's going to their head too. I don't think so because they don't get called out for it. And to me, that is what makes a bad episode of Friendship is Magic. Protagonist-centered morality shout out ruby season six and seven <laughs> and it's like this is the shit i hated that show and it's what makes bad episodes or at least can take a good episode of friendship is magic but not make it a great episode of friendship is magic is when the main character is very clearly in the wrong and here's a chance to actually take like a for the moral to be about accountability, at least to some degree. And instead it just isn't. And it's like, no, you were complete. Dear Princess Celestia, I didn't learn anything. I was right all along. Like, no, you fucking weren't, Applejack. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man. I I got some, I'm going to have a lot to say about this episode, man. <laughs> oh, Oakley Doakley. Oh, fucking boy. But... The more I talk about this, I'm like, while there are some questionable episodes in this season, this is the bad one. And it's just frustrating. It's not quite as unpleasant as I remember it being, but it's not pleasant. Like, it's not really funny. I just, I, I think to me, what really puts it here instead of here like really thinking about it and talking about it it's not just the friends being hypocrites although it's awful it's not the fact that they didn't decide to just talk to their friend and immediately decide to try to humiliate her and rub it in 
It's the fact that Sonic Rainboom happened. And it's very clear to us, the audience, again, like I keep saying, how fragile Rainbow Dash is as a person. And while they weren't 100% privy to it, they were at least like 85% privy to it. Like, even Fluttershy's like, guys, like, no, like, I can tell she is not that confident in herself right now. This is all, like, and then Rarity is the one who's, like, kind of talking to the rest of the crew. And I think, I don't remember exactly what Applejack said. It was like, shoot, like, Rainbow Dash is so fucking cocky. Like, I love her, but she's annoying as hell sometimes. Rarity's like, no, that's stage fright. I can tell she is projecting hard. Rarity at least had the emotional intelligence to know what's going on. And despite the fact that they know this is how our friend's mind works, they try to humiliate her. And it's so mean-spirited. And I, I'm very back and forth when it comes to mean-spirited humor and mean-spirited ideas. There's times where I'm like, that's so mean, it's awful, and I hate it like this. And then there's the first 30 minutes of Chicken Little, which I think is hysterical. But I think a lot of it is based on context and the world that you're in. This is a world where friendship is literally magic. Friendship isn't magic. Friendship is power. God, I can't wait to get to Cozy Glow. I don't really remember how good Season 8 is, but it has Cozy Glow and she's fantastic. But in a world like this, in a setting like this, no, I don't want everything to just be sunshine and rainbows. That's why, like, an episode like this is amazing. It shows the main character's flaws for what they are. Rainbow Dash has very genuine... Oh, what the fuck just happened? Oh, that was weird. Ah, wait. Oh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Rainbow Dash has very genuine flaws. They are present throughout this episode. But it's the way her friends react to her flaws that bother me. Here, Apple Bloom has very genuine flaws shown in this episode. And the way, like, she gets herself into a problem and people are saying, like, okay, we sympathize with you because of the plight you're in, but you also got yourself into it, so, like, we're gonna help you, but you have to take accountability. This is why this is the fucking S-tier episode. Because a character does something stupid, and it's fun, but they have to take accountability for it. Here, the remain five have no accountability for how horrible of friends they were. Uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna take a deep breath, drink water. Mm. Okay. Okay. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to Sweet and Elite. We are gonna move on to being the type of pony that every fucking pony should know. Now I'm thinking of Octavia's Overture. Who I think is also in this episode. Just fucking shout out Octavia. Um, I hated this episode the first time I watched it. Like, when it came out, the day it dropped, I was like, I, this is why I don't like Rarity. She is incredibly stuck up. She, I find her very annoying, too melodramatic, and I don't find it funny. Now I think it's fucking hilarious. And the fact that she kept wanting to blow off her friends and was willing to say i like i can either go to this garden party or my friend's birthday the friend who the only reason i have the like she's the only reason i have these connections in the fucking first place and i'm going to blow her off on her birthday to do this other shit wow awful fucking person and episode but, however, upon a rewatch, I get it. This episode's really, really good. What I love about Rarity in this episode is A, there's genuine conflict. Like, it is her whole life... <sighs> One of my favorite shows growing up, because I watched it with my family, like, we have VHS tapes that are just recorded episodes of Keeping Up Appearances. It is a British comedy 
about a woman named Hyacinth Bucket, which she hates that her last name is Bucket, because that's her husband's name, Richard Bucket. Anytime someone calls her that, she just gives them this flat look. And then they go, bouquet. And then she smiles. Like, that's how you're supposed to pronounce her last name. It's not bucket. It's bouquet, of course. Hyacinth fancies herself as this noble woman, this aristocrat who's, um, like, has the best dresses, the best hats, and it's just a socialite. Nobody likes Hyacinth. <laughs> People can't stand her. They deal with her, and they barely deal with her at that. And I love it. I think the show is hilarious. Rarity is Hyacinth if she had self-awareness. And, like, I say this as someone who adores Hyacinth as a character. Someone who was also actually likable and, like... Seem to sincerely care about the people in her life rather than just her social status. Now, Hyacinth, yes, does love her husband. She adores her son that you never see. But, like, there's always this sense of, like, while she cares about people, she cares about the status that they give her and the image. Which is why, like, her sister Violet is her favorite sister because she's the one with the Mercedes sauna and room for a pony. Her sister Daisy, who lives like a slob with her husband Onslow, who's the best fucking- I love Onslow. <laughs> Onslow is the most goaded character of all time, man. Like, Daisy adores Hyacinth, and Hyacinth is very embarrassed about Daisy. And then there's Rose, who's the very promiscuous sister, who she's like- She's my sister. I love her. I have to take care of her. But Violet's the one with a Mercedes sauna and room for a pony. The first time I saw this episode, I think it was I was seeing the more hyacinthy part of Rarity. And as much as I love Hyacinth, I'm like, that's not a that's not a likable character. Although I do because I think she's funny. Here I saw the real humanity, oh quote unquote, that equinity? Yes, you know what I mean. The humanity in Rarity. Twilight did me a solid. Got me, like, a suite at the castle where I can stay. Because I don't remember what it was for. I don't I don't, I don't. don't think she was there for a party. I think she was actually, like, working on some shit. Or I was like, look, I just wanted to kind of go to Canterlot for a bit. And Twilight hooked me up. She did me a fucking solid. So she goes. She brings her cat. She brings all her luggage. And she runs into this dude named Fancy Pants, because friendship is magic. Of course there's a motherfucker named Fancy Pants. Who is, when it comes to the social world, the elites, is like the most important person not named Celestia. Everyone knows him. Everyone knows that what he says goes. If he says something is in style, it was in style yesterday. Like, he's that dude. He's also just a nice guy. Like, I really like him. He's not in the show very often. I think, like, you kind of see him in the background every now and then. He maybe gets a lot. He's a fucking bro. I'm going to put a pin in that. There's a scene in this episode that I really, really like. Because it's kind of subtle. And it's dope as fuck. But Rarity runs into him. Has a short conversation. She's like, you know, I... I like, she literally runs in and was like, dude, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Like, I'm on my way back to the castle where all my shit is. He's like, you're staying at the castle. The castle, as he pronounced. He's like, huh. You know, I'm not sorry that you ran into me at all. In fact, like, yo, you seem like the kind of person that's worth knowing. Tell you what. There is a Wonderbolt show, like the Wonderbolt Derby. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to have, like, my private suite I would love it if you could come by. And she's like, thank, thank you. I really appreciate that. While in her mind going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She's like, got a fucking rainbow dash. So she goes back. She's like, okay. I want to make a really nice dress for Twilight. Her birthday is coming up. She got me this spot in Canterlot, and I want to pay that back in full. 
by giving her something wonderful. But if I go to this event, I, this is something that could really help me. It could really affect my social status. And not just in the sense of my status, but my career. I want to be a fashion designer. And I am a fashion designer. But this can catapult me in ways that making like dresses in Ponyville can't. I can get to know people whose opinion really means something in the industry I'm in. But if I go, I might be letting my friend down. Because I might not be able to finish the thing I promised I would make her. But if I don't go, I am genuinely sacrificing opportunity. I am sacrificing my dream. I mean, I can go... And as long as I'm back by a certain time, I can get the dress done. Okay. Okay. My dream will take priority for now, but I'm gonna fucking do it, okay? I'm gonna make Twilight her ding-dang dress, and it's gonna be wonderful. So, she goes to the Wonderbolt Derby, tells, like, a couple fibs to make her seem a little more important than she actually is. But, um, she gets along super well with Fancy Pants, who starts inviting her to other shit. She gets invited to other things, which leads to her song. You know, she's gonna be the belle of the ball, the star of the show. She's gonna be the type of pony that every pony, every pony should know. And, you know, it's this montage of her going to all these events. And then in, like, <laughs> there's, like, this one part where it's, like, a Brady Bunch-style thing with, like, a bunch of different faces together. And then one of them is just fucking derby. I think she has a bag on her head. And I love it. Like, that... That's a that's a great gag. <laughs> I, I just love seeing Derby. I think, yeah, I think there's also a part in uh, Luna Eclipse where there's people bobbing for apples and then Derby just like pops out of the cauldron. Like this is this is wonderful. Um, but she goes to all these different events instead of doing the thing for Twilight, and she's really getting into that instead. And then at the end of the song, she comes back home and is clearly exhausted and stressed out. And she throws something quick together for Twilight. Not nearly the elaborate dress that she planned on making. And then she just hangs her head afterward. Like, man. I... I know what I said I was going to do. And I had to sacrifice. Like, I sacrificed that for me. Instead of the other way around. And I fucking hate that I did it. I'm glad I did it because like I had like I had fun and it is helping me like with my career and like meeting all these people and shit but like am I genuinely a bad friend for what I'm doing? I think I am and I don't like that. Fuck. Okay. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna see if I can you know try to make this dress a little more something <laughs> and then i can make a twilight's party but then she gets an invite i believe it's by jet set and up a crust which again perfect friendship is magic names to the canterlot garden party which she's like oh fuck like the gala is the number one event in canterlot this is second if i can go to this i'm set it's the same time as Twilight's birthday. Oh, 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 I have to go to the garden party. Because, again, like, I, I, I can't miss this. It looks so, like, with the reputation I've just created, it looks really bad if I miss this. But I can't miss Sparks' party because it means I'm an asshole! I'm gonna lie. Applejack's the honest one. I can lie. Dear Twilight, 
My fucking cat got really sick. I can't make it out to Ponyville. I'm so sorry. Much love. Best wish wishes. Have a dope ass birthday. Rarity. Okay, and scent, and uh. Now I can go to the party guilt free? Eh? You can't say I'm doing one of those fucking DreamWorks smile. <laughs> like the one that Strat gives, like, you're expecting Prince Charming. Eh? I fucking love that face. So. She does that. She's a. And the, I think she sent it like the night before. Because she gets the invite. She's like, oh, that's tomorrow? Fuck. And then tomorrow comes and Sparks and the crew show up like, Rarity, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Not that I'm upset to see you, but why are you here right now? You said you couldn't make it to my birthday. And, you know, if the reason you couldn't make it is because you couldn't travel because Opal is sick, then we wanted to come see you because we don't want to have a party when there's only five of us. I don't remember if Spike was there. I don't think he was. It's like, we don't want to have the party without the whole squad. I gotta have my gaggle of girls. And, you know, you're part of the gaggle, Rarity. Let, let, let's hang out. I'm so excited to see you. And Rarity's like, yeah! It's, it's great to see you, too. And Fluttershy's, oh, where is the poor dear? Let me see her. One sec. Opal, I am so sorry about this. Takes her cat, just dunks her in water, and brings her back. Like, look at her. She's just... She looks like shit. <laughs> From this part of the episode onwards, Rainbow Dash's perception is like a 30. Because she immediately could tell, she's like, hold on a second. You know, for someone who is like, I have to stay in, I can't travel, my cat's sick. You look like you're dressed up and are about to go out to a party. What the fuck gives? And Rarity's like, uh, I don't even remember what she says. But anyways, they end up having their party for Twilight's birthday. Oh yeah, by the way, Twilight sees the dress that Rarity made. And Rarity's like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I kind of wanted it to be a little bit, you know, like more grand and like maybe a little bit better. And Twilight's like, dude, are you kidding? This is perfect. It's so simple. It's so chill. It's so low key. It's so me. Thank you. And, uh, Rarity's like, you really like it? I mean, of course you like it. Ha 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 Let me just crumple up the original design I was going to use and have no one look at it. Because, oh god, I just dodged a fucking bullet there. So they go down to Twilight's party where they're hanging out and they're drinking punch. And I like to think that it's spiked and everyone was, like, getting drunk because that's just funny to me. And they're partying, and the garden party is right outside. So Rarity does the classic, I brought two dates to the prom thing, and is hanging out with her gaggle of girls, and then goes out to Fancy Pants of the garden party, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here. And again, Rainbow Dash being on point. Rainbow Dash is the one to realize, like, hey, something's off. Like, Rarity, where have you been? Why is there a croquet mallet in your mouth? What are you not telling us? And I kind of like to, th this, you can make the argument that it's, Rainbow Dash just actually is like a very perceptive person when it comes to other people. Maybe that's the case. Maybe the whole thing is like, I'm the element of loyalty, so I can just tell that there is someone being disingenuous and that shit is wrong. And I, I'm like, it's making me more perceptive. I kind of like to think that because Rainbow Dash is the resident piece of shit in the group, she can tell when someone else is being a terrible... It's like, look, you guys are all my friends. Despite the fact that I'm kind of an asshole. Because I, but because I'm such an asshole, I can tell when someone is also doing that. Rarity, what's wrong? What are you not telling us? And I kind of just like that. So then, Twilight puts two and two together. It's like, hold on a second. You have been... Going back and forth between my birthday and some other high-class, really fancy shit and sneaking around. Yeah, that that's exactly what I'm doing. Rarity, what the fuck? Go to the other party. 
really? Yeah, like, dead ass. Go to the other party. I'm gonna have other birthdays. And I get to hang out with you all the time. You're my friend. This is something that is clearly very important to you and can help you. It can help, you know, give, like, establish your career and further you in the field you want to be in. I'm not offended that you want to do that instead. That makes sense. That's just good business. Fucking do it. And Rarity's like, oh. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I've been feeling like such an awful person. But you are like the best friend ever. And the Twilight's like, yeah. Fuck it. I'm drunk. There's another party out there. Let's crash it. <laughs> so they start having their party along with the garden party and rarity's like i want to kill myself right now <laughs> like i i don't want to be here i don't want this to happen because i remember the gala we all made asses of ourselves i can't have that happen to me twice and you know there's this whole moment of you know twilight just fucking dancing and I, I that's where the pin is I'll, I'll dress it in a second but yo the other friends doing shit and all the ho oh, oh, ho people was it oh great poop they go up to her like rarity do you know these ruffians ah 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 and her friends like twilight in particular like they kind of have this look on their face as rarity was not saying anything or like oh Oh, we've, she's embarrassed to be our friend. Oh, Did I, like, it's very quick. Like, it only lasts a few seconds, but you see that moment of, yeah, we're her friends. Like we, we love her. Oh, she's embarrassed. She, she doesn't love us back. And Rarity's like, yeah, they're my friends. They're my gaggle of girls. It's her birthday. She's the coolest fucking person I know. Same with her, 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 and her. I think I meant to say that five times. Maybe I only said it four. Whoops, sorry, Pinkie Pie. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this is also the episode that introduced the party cannon. Yeah, the party cannon's fucking awesome. But um, like these are my friends. They're my besties. It doesn't make me any less of a great designer that I have friends like this. But the fact that I prioritize so much of other shit over my friendship might mean that I'm a terrible friend, and I'm not sure about that. But when push comes to shove, they will always be more important to me than anything else. So that is it is what it is. Let me pull that pen out. Twilight and her and her, you know, the gaggle of girl. I guess I'm just gonna be calling them that now because I don't know. I kinda like that. Uh when the remain five go and crash the party and then Twilight just starts fucking drunk dancing. He goes up to her and it's like, hi there, young man, or young man, like, like, young mare. Like, ah, uh, like, how are you? Who, you know, they have like this very short conversation and he asks her, where did you get that dress? So at first he's like, hey, like, what's up? And then she's like, oh, no, yeah, I'm just from like Ponyville. He's like, okay, ma'am, from Ponyville. And he, he gives her this wink. He, like, winks at her. Where did you get that dress? Oh, you know, my friend Rarity made it for me. The way it comes across, genuinely speaking, is Fancy Pants saw Twilight fucking Sparkle, the apprentice to Princess Celestia, the one who defeated Nightmare Moon and Discord, crashing the party... And just, like, having a good time. And he's like, okay. This is a really important person. And I, like, I know... Like, I know that this is Rarity's friend. And I think Rarity is cool as hell. I see that she is wearing this cute little dress. Rarity probably made it. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go up to her. And instead of being rude, instead of asking her to leave... 
I'm gonna ask her where she got that nice dress in front of all these people and Twilight fucking Sparkle. If there's a pony, any pony should know in this town, it's her. Is going to say her friend Rarity made it. And my new friend Rarity, her reputation is going to go through the roof. It might kind of do a little bit for me as well. Like, look at the kind of people I know. But I'm going to do my new friend a solid. And I really like that. And then, yeah, after Rarity's like, no, like, I'm standing up for my friends. Like, that. They're my girls. These are my girls, and they're always with me. I have a lot of minute hour I need to catch up on at some point. Oh, goodness. Um. Anyways. They're like, uh, yeah, the other rich people are like, oh, you know, there's... Ah, fuck, I don't even remember what they say, but it's like, you know, looking down on them, their piece of shit and everything. Fancy Pants says, he's like, I don't know. I, I find them charmingly rustic. Again, just being a bro, I mean, like, no, like, they're kind of cool. I dig them. I dig the nice little dress. I dig them getting drunk and hanging out with their best friend and shit. And then because Fancy Pants says it's cool, everyone else there thinks it's cool. They're like, I'll take a gajillion of those dresses, Rarity. Ho, ho, ho. Um, and that's basically how the episode ends. This episode's fantastic. I feel like I've spent a lot of time talking about it. I haven't been checking. But I, I felt like I really had a lot to say. I love it. I feel like, to me, what makes this episode... Like, just talking about all the shit that happened. What really makes it great... Is Rarity being conflicted about what she's doing. It is not just... Cause I've talked about protagonist-centered morality. And you can make an argument that... This is an episode where Rarity is being a shitty friend and gets away with being a shitty friend, and that's not okay. And I get that. That's how I felt the first time I saw it, and it's why I hated it. The reason I love this episode is Rarity has genuine conflict about what is more important to me. My friends or my career? And honestly, kind of fair. Friends are important, but it's like, hey, if I can, like, skip this one event and do something that really helps me out, maybe it's better for me, like, especially when you're now a fucking adult who's, like, trying to live your life. And what I love is Twilight saying, dude, why was that ever a question? Go do what you need to do. I'm gonna have other birthdays. There's gonna be other times for us to hang out and do shit. This is important. You need to go do this. I would be mad if you didn't prioritize yourself. I love that. I really do. And then ultimately, yes, when push comes to shove. Well, I mean, you could say... You can't really say that because you could argue push coming to shove is... You're either going back home or you're going to the party. And she did choose the party. But again, with Twilight saying, yeah, that's fine. Like, I, I'm pissed that you lied to me about Like, I'm pissed that you lied to me about it. Because that means you didn't think I would be okay with it. Just talk to your friends. <laughs> but, uh, I really like this episode. It's really good. Then we get this one, Secret of My Excess, which is two birthdays in a row. This one's Spike's birthday. And him getting stuff on his birthday, it's, as a dragon, it's like triggering his draconic greed. And it makes him want more, which means he's like asking people for more stuff and just like stealing shit. Which is making him even more greedy. So he's trying to feed his greed even more. Which is actually making him physically start growing. And he's going through dragon puberty. And Excuse me. I need some water. I Sorry, I was talking about Sweet and Elite for a while. I need some water. Uh. Ugh. Dragon puberty. Ugh. I don't know why I'm getting so tongue-tied. It is a Spike episode, and like almost any Spike episode, with a very notable exception, actually. 
Spike is written like he's a piece of shit. The difference between this, or uh, let me rephrase that. I feel like in most Spike episodes, they either make him really unlikable or he's just kind of annoying. And in most of them, I really don't like them, which is sad because I really like Spike. Like in Lesson Zero, Spike is goaded as fuck. He is such a good support. Like he's a great straight man. When they play, a, and it's not to say Spike does not have negative qualities, but I feel like the way they get played up just make the episode unpleasant to watch. This to me is one of the very notable exceptions to that. Because while they are playing up negative qualities in his greed, it's written in a way where it's like, it's not that he's being a piece of shit. He literally can't control it. It is part of like his like species of psychology and physiology. It's like when I'm reading Worm and they talk about the reason that Rachel is the way she is. It's not because she's this mean, aggressive person. It's her mind has been rewritten to work like a dog's. So she doesn't get human social cues anymore. Like, oh, that's so interesting. That explains a lot and makes her a lot more sympathetic. And so when Spike is being a horrible person in this episode, I don't think, wow, what an asshole. I'm like, no, this is kind of really interesting. And it's kind of sad. <laughs> it's always kind of fucked up. I think it's great. <laughs> it's really sad and fucked up. It's great! Um, I remember this being the first episode where I liked Rarity as I was watching the show when it first came out. It was her relationship with Spike in this episode. It's very nice. And, like, the way he she gets the ruby from him, you can argue. It's like, yeah, she's just... Maybe she was being really manipulative and using her charms to get what she wants. Just, I don't like about her. But then in the like in the climax of the episode where he sees the gem again and he like wants to like, no, I'm not giving this to you. Because this was given to me by my friend. This is not just something I have because it, it's like I don't just value it because it's pretty. I value it because of where it came from. He is someone who is incredibly important to me. And because, you know, no one can tell that this giant rampaging dragon is Spike because they wouldn't think that. You're like, you can get your... F <laughs> get your meat hooks off the of bird. Like, you can get your fucking meat hooks and your beady little eyes off of... I also love the fact when she just starts nagging, Spike just... I think he rolls his eyes for a second and then just starts moving his claws up and down and like, nag, 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 which I think is fucking funny. Um, and there's just like that moment when they're both falling together and he's about to tell her how he feels about her and then she just covers his mouth, smiles, and like she's crying and like, I, I really like it. I really, really like this episode. It's great. It's <laughs> Maybe there are going to be a lot of us there's a lot of S-tier episodes in this season, man. There really are. There's just some absolute goaded keto at the top. But damn, there's some good ones. But, um... Let's go ahead and talk about a... I, where would I put this? Okay, so Baby Cakes. Which, fun fact, by the way... These three episodes did not air in this order... Heart, uh, Hearth Swarming Eve, which is the Christmas episode, aired first. Then I believe it was Cakes and then Family Appreciation Day. I think it was just because, like, Christmas is coming up. Let's play the Christmas episode. But the pr actual production order and how it airs on the DVD is 11, 12, 13 rather than 11, 12, 13. Actually, yeah, because I think Cakes still airs af so before Family Appreciation Day. So, what, 11, 12, 13... Instead of it being like this. Which, I don't know. I just think that's kind of fucking neat. Anyways, baby cakes. Uh, short version. Mr. and Mrs. Cake have twins. None of which are Earth Ponies. And they're both Earth Ponies. And then, there's literally, like, the very start of the episode, like, huh, that one's a Pegasus, that one's a Unicorn. That's fucking weird. And Mr. Cake's like, no, that's totally normal. That's just kind of how shit works. Right? <laughs> My wife didn't cheat on me, right? <laughs> like, ah, 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 that's kind of funny. That's kind of fucked, but okay. 
And then uh, they're going to go out of town, so they're looking for a babysitter. Pinky wants to babysit them because she fucking loves the kids. And they're like, ah, let's not trust Pinky with live children. So they go to the rest of the remain five who, for various reasons, all say no. My favorite being Rarity. Because everyone else, I think Applejack's like, I gotta harvest some shit. Twilight's like, bro, I gotta fucking study, man. And I think Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash are like, no, we're like genuinely busy. Rarity literally just says, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Like babysitting, nope, not my thing. I am flattered you would think to ask me. But nah. And you know what? That is an incredibly important lesson that a lot of people struggle with, self-included. Sometimes, it, you just gotta be able to say no to something. And not like in the drugs way, which is still important, like, you know, no means no, or just say no to drugs. Sometimes when someone wants you to do them a favor, it's just not something, you don't have to do it. You can say, look, man... Maybe it's because you've got other shit. Maybe you're just like, I just don't want to. I'm sorry. You, your friendship means a lot to me, but that is just not something I want to do. And I, that, you know, we got we to be able to normalize that shit. But anyways, they have no other option. So they ask Pinky and Pinky helps them out. Babysits the kid, you know. When you wiggle your tail, oink, 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 and you wiggle your around, oink, oink, oink. I had that fucking oink, oink, oink song stuck in my head for a couple days. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, basically, the point of the episode is about responsibility and how, I mean, I guess there's another way of looking at it, which is the moral I get from reading Frankenstein, which is some people aren't fit to be parents and some people shouldn't have kids. Not to say that the cakes aren't, cakes aren't fit for it, but Pinky is very clearly struggling with it. He's like, yeah, not, not everyone is supposed to be a parent. Not everyone is supposed to be a babysitter. Rarity understands that. She's like, dude, I just don't want to do it. But it's about responsibility. And there's this whole scene when Twilight comes over and she's like, Pinky, do you need my help? Yes, babies are hard. Yeah, I figured they would be. And like, I know you, you probably weren't fit for this. So I finished up my shit so I could help. Excuse me, bitch. Did you just say I'm incapable of doing that? Did you just insinuate that I am incapable of doing something? Fuck you. I can't. Fuck you. I can't eat all these apples. Oh, no, 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 no. Um... I guess that's kind of another more like like stealth moral in the episode too. It's like you know what, just don't be an asshole to people. Sometimes I don't know. Um, Pinky learns and Pinky learns a valuable lesson about like responsibility. It's like you know what, babies are hard, children are hard. Sometimes when someone tells you you're not ready for something, they fucking know what they're talking about. But also at the same time. If something is really important, you can adapt to it. You can learn to grow from it. And what really sells the episode for me is at the end of the episode when the cakes are like, okay, we're coming back. We're coming back. We're kind of fucking scared. Holy crap. The house is still intact. The babies are asleep. They're fed. There's not a mess everywhere. Pinky, you did great. Can we ask you to babysit again? And she's like, no, uh, 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 can't do it. Won't do it. I love the kids. That is outside my wheelhouse. And then she hears the kids snoring. Like, Pinky pie. And just, I'm available next week. Like, yeah, I love these kids so much, man. I'll do it. I just like that. I think it's really fucking sweet. I think I'd probably put it around here because it's not an episode where I'm like, I really like it or just fucking love it, man. But it's, it's all right. And no, because if it was all right, it would be here. I think it's a solid B tier episode. I like kind of some of the, I guess like I want to call them stealth morals ish. Like I like that. I think the ending is really sweet. I think there's some fun gags in there. It's, it's pretty good. Family Appreciation Day. Uh, I think it's 
I don't think it's going to move from that spot. I'm going to be completely honest. I think this is like the definition of a C tier episode. It used to be my least favorite episode of the show. And honestly, if it is going to move anywhere, it would move down. Here's the thing. On its face, it's fine. It's uh, Zap Apple season. which is, It's Magic Apples. Whatever the fuck. It's Magic Apple season, and the family's got to harvest it. And it's an Apple Bloom episode. It's not really a Crusader episode. It's an Apple Bloom episode. Where... It's Family Appreciation Day at school, which is essentially show and tell. Like, bring a member of your family, have them talk about their lives and what they do, and blah, 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 blah. Like, career day kind of thing. And Apple Bloom can't bring Applejack because she's busy with the harvest. She can't bring Big Mac because she's busy with the harvest. Which only leaves Granny Smith putting a fucking giant pin in the wall. She is very embarrassed about Granny Smith because Granny Smith is old and senile and weird and Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are like, your grandma is really old and senile and weird. Ha ha ha. And Apple Bloom is just trying to find out, like, trying to sneak. Ugh. She's trying to think of clever ways to get out of bringing Granny Smith to school, which does lead to this one, like, Weekend at Bernie's kind of scene. And I'm not going to lie, I do think it's kind of funny. Then Granny Smith ends up showing up to the school anyways, and then gives this whole thing about how she's like the the fucking oldest living person who settled the town. And it it means a pretty neat story. I kinda like it. And I think what I the thing I really like about this episode is the moral of your family is fucking cool. Do not be in, I mean, don't get me wrong, like if you have a family member who's John Wayne Gacy, you know, you can be embarrassed about that or you know that kind of shit but if it's just like your grandma's a little kooky everyone's grandma's a little kooky that's what makes grandma so fucking cool old people are cool your family is great like when we were on vacation i was talking to some of my friends like just about my dad because they've met my parents are like dude i haven't seen your dad in a long time but your dad's really fucking cool i really like that guy and that just made me feel good. And so I told my dad, like, as we were driving yesterday, I just kind of sent him a text before we head out, like, hey, I just want to let you know real quick. Like, I was talking to some of my friends. My friends think you're cool as fuck, man. I love you. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And my dad just sends me a response. He's like, I am cool. <laughs> and I, he's like, I am cool. Like father, like son. I'm like, that's amazing. I love that. So just, like, the moral of the episode, your family is cool appreciate them and love them for who they are is a great fucking moral i just don't find the episode that funny aside from like one scene and i think granny smith's story is pretty neat but it's kind of okay although one thing i think is kind of funny it's not like a ha ha funny i i just it's more kind of adorable is first off diamond tiara's dad is named filthy rich Again, great fucking friendship is magic name. In season five, you meet his wife, whose name is Spoiled Rich. Which means Diamond Tiara Rich, I, I guess. And uh, what's funny is Granny Smith doesn't call him Mr. Rich. She calls him Filthy, and he fucking hates it. That's gold. What I love, though, is when Diamond Tiara's dad is, like, giving his family appreciation days because he's got a bit of a southern drawl, is... She looks so happy to be listening to her dad. Like, all the other kids are just, like, snoring and, like, not giving a shit. She is sitting upright, smiling, paying attention. Like, this is one of the only times in the show I think I have seen her genuinely smile. That's actually kind of sweet. But let me take the pen out of the wall. The reason this was my least favorite episode for quite a while it's it's an episode about apple bloom trying to appreciate her family and being like oh man i have to bring someone from my household into class i don't want to bring my grandma because she's kooky and weird i don't want to bring i can't bring my sister because she's busy i can't bring my brother because she's busy what do i do not one time are the parents mentioned not once is there anything said about them we get it 
eventually, like, season six or seven is when we get it. I'm like, we had no idea what the status of the parents were at this point. Most people thought they were dead. And we were all right. But the fact is, like, here is an episode where you can bring it up. You can mention them. Maybe even just, like, a quick line about, like, oh, if you don't want them to be dead, that's fine. Like, yeah, they're busy. Like, they're out of town. Like, they travel. Uh, like, you can do something. It's like, if they are dead, maybe, like, a very quick kind of subtle... I, I don't know, man. Just the fact that there's this whole episode about the only other person I can bring is my grandma and I don't want to when there is this giant elephant in the room that is never addressed always bothered me. And I think it's... <laughs> Man, my voice fucking cracked there. Holy crap. Them not mentioning the parents at all bothers me a lot. The moral of the episode, and I'm gonna be honest, seeing Diamond Tiara being actually adorable for like two seconds kind of puts it about here. I think it ultimately balances out to like a C tier, it's okay kind of episode. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna talk about Hearth Swarming Eve, get halfway through the season, and then I'm gonna take a break. I don't know how long I've been talking. I feel like I've been talking for a fat minute, so let me just do this, pause for a bit, uh, I'm not really hungry, so I don't think I'll go get something to eat, maybe like some ice cream or something, I'll probably, actually, I probably will go see my family for a bit, because I haven't seen him yet, I haven't seen my cat, because he's over there, I'm gonna go see him for a bit, I'm gonna go appreciate my family, and then we'll talk about when Applejack left hers, but before that, the fucking Christmas episode. Hearth Swarming Eve is a celebration about friendship and harmony because it's a costria. Of course it is. And you get some lore. <laughs> you get that sick, sick, sweet lore, baby. <laughs> of how the three main races, I say main because, you know, like alicorns and... I mean, are changelings considered ponies? Like, no, but maybe yes. And the, I guess, like, the three big pony races, Earth Ponies, Unicorns, and Pegasi, how they were three separate races and they all hated each other. The Unicorns were super snooty. The Pegasi were, like, a warmongering country, and the Earth Ponies were ran by a moron. <laughs> and how they all hated each other, and the more they disliked each other and mistrusted each other... There was this storm that reflected all of that anger and hatred and whatnot, and they left to go settle a new land, and they all went to the same place and hated each other even more, and then they sang some songs about friendship and became cool. That's the short version of it. Here's why this episode is great. Chancellor Pudding. <laughs> so the three main leaders, you have... Rarity play a oh, fuck. What are the names? Commander Hurricane is the one that Rainbow Dash plays. There's the very militaristic, like Spartan leader who's a total asshole. And it's Princess Platinum is Rarity, who it, it's just Rarity hamming it up and being her most Rarity self, and it's really funny. You would think that the Earth Ponies would then be led by Applejack. A, she's the most Earth Pony of all Earth Ponies, except for, I don't know, maybe Baby Akadosh. And two, she's very stubborn. Like, here's the one who's really snooty. Here's the one that's really aggressive and hot-headed. Here's the one that's way too stubborn. That makes a lot of sense to me. And then the three that kind of bring everyone together then would be Twilight, Fluttershy, and Pinky. That makes a lot of sense to me. Instead, Applejack is the one that's, you know, kind of bringing people in, which still kind of works. And Pinky is the leader playing Chancellor Puddinghead, who is an idiot. And he's so funny. I love it. It is the kind of like, every time I watch the episode, I'm like, I feel like their role should have been reversed. But you can't, you couldn't have done it without making this character like as funny as they are. This is great. Um, I think it's good. 
I'm sorry, I'm kind of underplaying it. I think I am just ready to take a break because I've talked to, I talked a lot about this episode, man. <laughs> but um, it is just to me. Okay, let me put it like this. To me, I talked about how this is like the encapsulation of what a bad Friendship is Magic episode is. You have the main characters doing something really fucking bad, taking no accountability, and the episode not, like, pretending that it's completely okay for what they did, and it's kind of unpleasant to watch. This is a good episode, because it's, like, when characters are being awful people, they are, and again, they're playing a role, but they are called out for being awful people, there is opportunity for growth, there's a short little song, and it's kind of sweet, but it's just sweet, it's just pleasant. It's not as funny. It's not as funny as... Th uh, this one is really funny. I think this one's funny. This one's funny. This is just a lot of fun. This is just like a really strong character study. This to me is... I mean, Suited for Success is Rarity's like season one character study episode. This is like one of those. It's a really strong character study episode... I mean, which is also what Lesson Zero is, but Lesson Zero is really fucking funny. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think I would put this episode up here. I can't. I feel like of these, it's probably the strongest. Anyways, I, I don't know why I'm doing all this right now. Anyway, this is a really good episode. I think it's a lot of fun. It's not an all-timer like these two are. I don't think I can put it up here. I can definitely put it up here. It's a good time. So this is me taking a break. We will get to the second half of the season. And some of the episodes I've highlighted is not being favorites. And then we'll talk about the wedding. I'm so, so excited to talk about a Canterlot wedding. But all things in good time. The wizard's never late. He arrives precisely when he intends to. Your cutie mark is never late. It arrives right when you're gonna get it. So, uh, we're gonna take a break for now, and then we'll go get it soon.